Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights. You can see I've uh, improvised a little with my marquee this week, because all three of these movies have titles longer than could fit on there. I, th I don't even think I could get all of Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires on this marquee. So, we may do with what we have, though. Uh, last time we did a Dracula triple feature, starting with the sequel to the original Dracula, Dracula's Daughter. My memory of this movie is that I really liked it. I liked it probably about as much as I liked the original Dracula. And uh, upon a rewatch, um, yeah, yeah, I like this better, uh, not better than, as good as the original Dracula. This is super underrated. I, I still really like this movie. Dracula's Daughter, the story of the daughter of Count Dracula after his death, and she kind of, she's trying to escape the, the pressures put on her by being associated with Dracula, um, but also she's a vampire and she kind of has to deal with being a vampire even if she doesn't like it that much. It's it's a sympathetic tale, I think. It's 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 not Dracula where like Dracula's just blatantly the villain. In this, like Dracula's daughter, she's like a sympathetic character. She doesn't want to be Dracula's daughter, but she is and she kind of has to live with that. The the movie takes place actually the movie starts right where Dracula ends, uh, with Van Helsing having slain Dracula. And then Van Helsing has to go to a mental institute because he thinks vampires are real. But then uh, Dracula's daughter, and more importantly, Dracula's daughter's assistant, who seems way more enthusiastic about being a vampire than she does, uh, they go out and do vampire shit, and that kind of points the townsfolks towards, hey, you know, Van Helsing wasn't crazy, there are vampires, and there's another one out there, and we really need Van Helsing to come help us deal with it. So yeah, it's, it's smart, it's fun, it's a lot more sympathetic than the, than, I, f the, I feel like Dracula's daughter is a more sympathetic character than Dracula was. And I think that makes for a very interesting follow-up. Because um, they do, they, they kind of try something similar with some of the Frankenstein sequels. Uh, Son of Frankenstein and Ghost of Frankenstein are both about, like, Frankenstein's sons who don't want to be associated with him at all. Um... And, and then, of course, you've got Young Frankenstein, uh, which takes that concept and does it much, much, much better than Son or Ghost of Frankenstein do. But uh, Dracula's Daughter, I think it works. I think, I think they did the child of, of a horrible person having to live with who they are a lot better than either of the Frankenstein sequels. Man, I am really blanking on specifics here. <laughs> I... See, I typically record these videos like a week after I've, I've watched the movies, but a week ago feels like a fucking eternity right now. A lot of shit has happened in the past week, my dudes. Also, also, Dracula's Daughter is a pretty simple, straightforward film. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, there are, there are some really good monologues, some really good lines in there. It's, it's good gothic horror. I, I wish people would talk about this more when they talk about good gothic horror movies. It was, I think, a big inspiration on the, the lesbian vampire trope. Because I'm, I'm not gonna go so far as to say Dracula's daughter in this movie is like, full-on lesbian vampire, but it's it's just kind of the vibe vampires give. They're very 
seductive creatures and they tend to go after women. So it's like, she's seductive and she's seducing women. It's like, I, I kind of see how you get from Dracula's daughter to like, Vampiros Lesbos or something. <laughs> like, there, there's a, a, like, Daughters of Darkness, something like that. There's an obvious connection here. I, I see where this trope comes from. I, I think it has its roots with uh, Dracula's daughter. Um, I think this is the last movie in the uh, Universal Dracula franchise I am willing to show. Uh, now, maybe someday I'll get around to watching Son of Dracula and House of Dracula. And if those are good, I'll recommend them, but I am not going to recommend those movies blind. Because a lot of Universal sequels are not very good. Is it weird that I find this, like, way less disappointing than, uh, Brides of Dracula? Because Brides of Dracula is... It, it doesn't have the original Dracula in it. I complained that it didn't have the original Dracula in it. And I complained about the person they replaced Dracula with in that movie. But this also does that. This, uh, uh, Bela Lugosi is not in it, uh, and they, they've replaced him with a different character, but I feel like the different character they've replaced him with isn't just blatantly supposed to be Dracula, but they couldn't get the actor back. It, it feels like a character that was never written as Dracula, a character who was written as their own thing. I don't know if you guys can tell, I got some new glasses, and they got some, like, gold rims, which I really like. It's a really groovy look, but, uh, it's not showing up in the camera super well. It kind of blends in with my skin a little, so I'm worried how that's gonna look when I'm done filming this. Granted, I'm looking at it on a pretty small screen that's probably about mm, 10 feet away from me, so... Small screen, 10 feet away from me. Maybe my glasses look perfectly fine, but they are not showing up. I, I cannot see my glasses from here. Anyways, um, Dracula's Daughter, highly recommended by me. Great gothic horror movie. Good early, like, lady vampire movie. Lady vampires. I don't know, something about lady vampires just works way better than men vampires. So, if, if you like lady vampire movies, you like good gothic horror, you like the original Dracula, you like the Bela Lugosi Dracula, please watch Dracula's Daughter, because it, it doesn't get enough love, right? Like, everyone talks about Bride of Frankenstein. Everyone knows Bride of Frankenstein, great Frankenstein sequel. No one ever talks about, oh, D Dracula's Daughter, great Dracula sequel. But I think it's a great Dracula sequel, so uh, please check it out. Please tell me I'm not alone uh, in, in loving Dracula's daughter. I think it is as good as the original Dracula. After that, we've got Dracula Prince of Darkness, the third Hammer Dracula movie. We, it finally sees the return of Christopher Lee, and the film is much improved for it. Although, um, I don't think it's perfect. Uh, it's about these tourists who show up in, in parts of Trans- in the part of Transylvania Dracula lives in, I guess. Uh, and they kind of- they don't have a place to stay for the night, and they- they end up at this, like, mysterious house that Dracula used to live in, and what do you know- Dracula's still there, um, I mean, Dracula's body's still there, and his assistant sacrifices one of the tourists to, like, resurrect Dracula, so now Dracula's back, he, he's back to being Dracula, back to doing vampire things, and, uh, of course, uh, good old uh, Van Helsing, Peter Cushing returns as Van Helsing, has to come and stop him. Van Helsing must get so fucking bored with dealing with Dracula, because, like, every one of these Hammer movies, every one of these Hammer movies, it's just like, 
oh, it's Dracula again, it's Dracula again. It, hey, here, here, Van Helsing, Van Helsing, we need you to defeat Dracula again. Come defeat Dracula again for us, Van Helsing. I don't think this is as good as Horror of Dracula. It's, it's a little slow, a little dull. It definitely has its moments. It's definitely got some good stuff in it. Um, I mean, any time Christopher Lee is on screen is a good time. Especially when he's on screen as Dracula. So, he, he's a good Dracula in this. And, and I think there's enough going on that it makes a decent little movie. It's, again, not my favorite. But, yeah, there's good stuff about it. It's, it's a pretty... Oh, overall, a fairly positive uh, Dracula interpretation. Directed by Terrence Fisher, who directs a lot of these Hammer horror movies. I, I think Terrence Fisher has taken the top spot for the director whose movies I have recommended the most. Uh, I will say that for sure next week, because I am recommending another one of his films tonight. So... After tonight, I will, I'm certain Terrence Fisher will have the top spot because he did this, he did Horror of Dracula, he did uh, Curse of Frankenstein, I think, and then at least one of the sequels to those, if not two. So that would put him at either four or five. Four would, would tie him with Ishiro Honda the director of the original Godzilla, five would put him ahead. So props to you, Terrence Fisher. You you are now leading the charge on the director we have seen the most. What a boring title. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. That sounds like it could be any Dracula movie. That doesn't sound like a sequel at all. Um, I think I read somewhere... The, the American title was, like, Dracula Returns or something. Which, like, yeah, that's a much better title. Because Dracula Returns. It is a sequel. Dracula Prince of Darkness tells me nothing. That's just another name for Dracula. Also, the German title for the film is Blood for Dracula. The title of Paul Morrissey's uh, Dracula parody movie, uh, that, that was the follow-up to Flesh for Frankenstein, um, which is what I wanted to show tonight, but Vinegar Syndrome is threatening us with a 4K release of Flesh for Frankenstein, and I think I'm gonna hold out until they put out their super nice special edition of Flesh for Frankenstein instead of showing my dingy imported copy of it. So, apologies for anyone looking forward to me talking about Flesh for Frankenstein. It's still gonna happen, it'll still happen, I promise, but, uh, it's, it's gonna take a little longer. Got this nice little Scream Factory release. Scream Factory's put out a lot of Hammer horror movies, but not... All of the Hammer horror movies, which bothers me a little, because it's like, like I when I wanted um, the Revenge of Frankenstein, I'm like, oh, surely Scream Factory has put out one for this, put out a Blu-ray for this, and they hadn't. I'm like, well, that's lame. But a uh, nice little Shout Factory release or Scream Factory release. They're the same company. Scream Factory is Shout Factory, but for horror movies. And sometimes even for just, like, horror-adjacent movies. I think, uh, They Live is on the Scream Factory label, even though They Live is not really a horror movie. The nice little Scream Factory release. It has an audio commentary from Christopher Lee, so I think I am gonna hold on to this at least long enough to hear Christopher Lee's commentary on it. Uh, I, I might... I might get rid of it after that, because I, I didn't... The only reason I would rewatch this movie is just to hear Christopher Lee's commentary on it. But, 
uh, as a fan of the Hammer Dracula series, it was worth watching once. This is not one of the bad ones. This is definitely one of the more enjoyable films uh, in the Hammer Dracula franchise. And finally, we watched The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, the ultimate cult movie crossover, because this was a co-production between Hammer Horror and uh, the Shaw Brothers. The Shaw Brothers helped produce this movie. The Shaw Brothers, of course, were uh, a, a Hong Kong studio who produced a lot of kung fu movies. We might have seen a Shaw Brothers movie before. Oh, we did. Uh, uh, Mighty P. King Man. Mighty P. King Man was a Shaw Brothers release. So, that's at least one other Shaw Brothers movie we've looked at. Yeah, a Hong Kong studio did a lot of great kung fu movies, and this is a weird, like, it's a kung fu movie uh, with hammer horror elements added into it. And it's kind of interesting to see Hammer take on, like, Eastern horror, Eastern supernatural horror. Um, because a lot of Hammer's movies skew, like, real Catholic. And it's kind of funny in this movie, uh, Van Helsing has made his way to Hong Kong, uh, along with his son, and, um... In, in this movie, he's like, oh, you know, vampires in the West, they're horrified by the crucifix, but in the East, the symbol of Buddha hurts vampires. And it's like, oh, that's weird that <laughs> vampires are, are affected by the regional religion. You know, it's it's not Christianity specifically. It's just like, whatever religion the people around here believe that's what defeats the vampires. Although I think, I th believe in the first movie he said, like, oh, the crucifix hurts vampires because it symbolizes good over evil. So if, if we're going by the good over evil standard, then all right, fine. Just like whatever religious iconography you have around, that'll work. Uh, anyway, in this movie, Van Helsing, still played by Peter Cushing, uh, this is, this is after, um, this, this was like the second to last Hammer Horror movie produced. This was after Christopher Lee had, like, officially retired as Dracula. Uh, his, his last film being Satanic Rites of Dracula. Uh, so Peter Cushing still out there as Van Helsing. Uh, he and his son go to Hong Kong. And they meet this, like, band of, uh, ninjas? These karate, kung fu, martial arts experts? Well, martial arts experts. That's, uh, we'll, we'll say martial arts experts. Um, and they meet this band of martial arts experts who, who has found, uh, the, they've killed one of these vampires and they've, sort of learned, like, there's these seven golden vampires, and they have to defeat all seven of them, uh, because they're working for Dracula now. Because Dracula went to Hong Kong, disguised himself as a Chinese vampire, and he got these seven vampires working for him, and they killed the first one, and now they're like, Hey, Van Helsing, you know about Dracula and vampires. Would you please come help us defeat the rest of these vampires? And and so it's a journey of uh, the two of them, uh, Van Helsing, his son, uh, this princess, the, like, like mid-European princess, who, like, I think French, I think she's French, who's funding the whole thing. And then this, like, band of, I, I think they're siblings, a bunch of siblings who all do kung fu. I know at least two of them are brothers because they, the, the two sword fighters are brothers because they'll, like, hook arms and each swing a sword. And then they refuse to break apart from each other. 
It's kind of funny. Um, and then one of them has axes, one of them has a big spear, one of them has nunchucks, I think? Is he holding nunchucks on the cover? No, he's holding the bow staff on the cover. No. Oh, wait, no. No, I see the tip. It's a spear. And one of them has a bow and arrow. <laughs> so, man, I really like this movie. This one's a lot of fun. Like, it's just, it's, it's such an interesting mix of cultures, and... I mean, it was produced in Hong Kong in association with the Shaw Brothers. So I, I get the feeling most of the Chinese culture in this is pretty accurate. At the very least, it's not so outlandishly wrong that I, as an American, recognize that it is outlandishly wrong. Now, uh, maybe someone who, like, grew up in Hong Kong and is more familiar with these things would look at the movie and go, oh, well, th there's these clear inaccuracies, but to me it seems fine. It seems like a, a very interesting blending of cultures in this film. Uh, and an interesting blending of genres. I... Hammer horror kung fu movie. That's just like, got me, man. That's exactly what I want. Give give me the fucking hammer horror kung fu movie. Give it to me. That that's my shit, man. Hammer horror kung fu. Fuck yeah. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a really fun movie. There's a lot I like about it. Um, it's it's cheesy, but like. Kung Fu movies are cheesy. Hammer horror movies are cheesy. You combine those two things, you're gonna get something a little cheesy. I can live with it. And I, I even, there's stuff I genuinely like about it. Like, this is not a completely like, oh, it's such a cheese fest, just watch it because of how silly it is. It's silly, but there's good stuff too. It's, it's not, it's not complete cheese start to finish. I really like that um, the main character, uh, uh, Van Helsing's son, right? They're, they're on this adventure, and it's Van Helsing's son and this, like, French princess. But then he ends up getting into a romance with one of the martial arts people. There's a, It's another woman, unfortunately. We're not that bold. We're not going to have him hook up with one of the guys. But there, there's one woman in the Kung Fu family. Um, and he, he hooks up with the Kung Fu girl. And it's like, nice! Like, I, I, what I expect out of these movies is that, like, you know, the white European is going to get with the white European, so... I'm glad that's not what happened. I'm glad they subverted my expectations on that one. He ends up with the Chinese girl. That's cool. It's very cute. At also, I like... that. That's why I like it. I, I like when they get together with, like, the one you're not expecting. Because it's a little cuter when that happens. You're like, oh, that's nice. Good. Good for them. <laughs> you're not just going to stick them together with the person of his same race. There's also kind of the implication that the princess wants to get together with one of the kung fu guys, but that never really happens, so it's like... Eh, whatever. Yeah, I, I had a lot more to say about Seven Golden Vampires than those other two movies. Seven Golden Vampires. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about, and uh, it's a lot more entertaining than Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Maybe not as good as Dracula's Daughter. I might like Dracula's Daughter better, but I definitely have more to say about Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Um, the second-to-last Hammer horror movie produced, the second-to-last movie produced by Hammer, um, or at least second-to-last horror movie produced by Hammer, uh, the last one being To the Devil a Daughter, which is a movie I love but you know it's satanic horror that's just my shit uh matt likes satan i couldn't tell 
Um, yeah, I, I love a good satanic horror movie. Um, and, and To the Devil a Daughter is that. So I will definitely be recommending that because I have a copy of it. Oh, can I grab it? There it is. To the Devil a Daughter. Starring, starring Christopher Lee. You know, he, he wasn't totally done with Hammer Horror. Just done being Dracula. Technically, Dracula is in this movie, but it's not Christopher Lee, and it's, like, really obviously not Christopher Lee. Like, it's it's really noticeable that this is not the same Dracula from the other Hammer Horror movies. And, I mean, pretty early on in the film, he disguises himself as a Chinese vampire, so it's like, okay, well... Maybe just start the film like that. Start it with him, like, being reincarnated as a Chinese vampire. And just don't bother showing Dracula at all. But I, I suppose this is the final Hammer Dracula movie. Even if it doesn't have Christopher Lee in it. And I mean, it's a better movie than Satanic Rites of Dracula. But I think Satanic Rites of Dracula might be a better finale. You know what I mean? Because this this seems like the extra one, right? This is the extra spinoff where they go to China. Okay? We're not going to count that as part of the main series. And that's why I showed it out of order. is because, like, I knew this didn't tie into that franchise that strongly. I was a little surprised Dracula was in it. I, I didn't know Dracula was in it. I just knew Christopher Lee was not. And yeah, it doesn't really tie into the other Hammer Dracula movies. It is its own thing. You don't have to watch the other movies to get it. Uh, another nice Scream Factory release. Um, not as many special features as Dracula Prince of Darkness had, but... It does include the original U.S. cut of the movie, which I don't know why you would want to watch that. I don't know why you would want to watch a watered-down version of this movie, but it's there if you want it. So, film preservation, posterity's sake, yeah, it's, it's just a good movie. I just, it's a good time all around. It's kung fu hammer horror. You can't possibly go wrong with that. Uh, fucking speaking of the Shaw Brothers, goddamn Arrow Video just announced this, like, huge-ass Shaw Brothers box set coming out this December, and I'm like, oh, my poor wallet, but I need it. I need it. <laughs> uh, it's coming out around Christmas, so, like, I'll have Christmas money to spend on it. I'm gonna get it. I, I, I want that so bad. Jeez, it was like, it's like 12 movies, I think. 12 Shaw... Well, that's a pleasant noise. 12 Shaw Brothers movies. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, last time I asked, what is a sequel you don't think gets the credit that the first movie does? That, that deserves as much credit as the first movie, if not more, that just doesn't get it. And I gotta say, just this week, I watched uh, Adam's Family Values. We were talking about that two or three episodes ago. I watched Adam's Family Values, and I liked it better than the first Adam's Family movie. Um, because I, I think if the first movie gets the dynamic just perfect, but the plot is really boring. The second movie, I think, ups it a lot. I think I think the story works a lot better in the second movie. So that's why I like the second Adams Family movie better than the first one. Although, I do think the vibe seems to be that the two are just about as good as each other. Like, people who like one kind of tend to like the other as well. So that might not be the best answer. So instead, I will say... Uh, the Omen 3, The Final Conflict, I think it is a very, very good m movie, very good sequel, 
and I'm surprised it doesn't get more credit than it does, because it's way better than The Omen 2. Way better than The Omen 2. Um, I could name a couple more, too. Um, uh, Prom Night 2, Hello, Mary Lou. Much better than the first Prom Night, but it's also not actually a sequel, so that one maybe doesn't count. Also, Predator 2. I really liked Predator 2, and I... More people need to talk about Predator 2, because it's, it's a really good movie. It's not as good as Predator. That's one where I'm like, okay, Predator, definitely the superior movie. But Predator 2, well worth watching, in my book. Chewy Chips gives us a few. They say, Ginger Snaps Back the Beginning, Human Centipede 2, The Exorcist 3, Psycho 2, and Dracula 2 Ascension. Um, Ginger Snaps Back, I've never seen. I I only watched the first Ginger Snaps very recently. I, I hadn't seen it before, just like a, a month or two ago. But it was, it was okay. I liked it well enough. I might watch the sequel. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Human Centipede 2, I haven't watched and I have heard very bad things about. Um, now, I'm someone who likes Human Centipede. I think the first Human Centipede is a pretty funny movie. Uh, but I've heard the second one gets a lot grosser. I have not heard good... In fact, you're probably the first person I've ever heard try to say it's worth watching. <laughs> um, I may look into it, because I did like the first one, but I'm also keenly aware people think the second one is a lot harder to sit through. Um, The Exorcist 3 is really interesting. It's, uh, it's a lot more psychedelic than the first movie, but it's, it almost feels like a combination of the first two Exorcist movies, right? Because the first Exorcist is just, like, such a good horror movie, and the second Exorcist is not at all. It's not scary, even a little bit. It doesn't even really try to be scary. It's just, like, this weird, trippy nonsense. And Exorcist 3 takes those two ideas and makes a scary movie that is weird, psychedelic nonsense. Um... I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Exorcist 3, but I totally understand why people like it. There is definitely a lot to like about that movie. Um, Psycho 2, I am going to agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't know why people don't talk about Psycho 2 as much as... I mean, okay, the first one, it's a classic. It's a cinema classic. It's Alfred Hitchcock, right, who did not do the sequel. So, obviously, Psycho 1 is a lot better than Psycho 2, at least in my opinion. S Psycho 2 makes Norman Bates a sympathetic character, and I, I really like it. I, I think it, it goes the one and only direction you could go with a Psycho sequel. I think it works. Uh, Dracula 2 The Ascension, I have never heard of. I have no idea what that's a sequel to. Uh, Henry Koslick chimes in with Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, uh, which I haven't watched, but I think I, I would really like to, because I think the first Hellboy, uh, the, the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy, really underrated movie. I, I, I don't think enough people talk about how good Guillermo del Toro's Hellraiser, or, Hellraiser, Hellboy is, so I definitely want to check out Hellraiser 2. Hellboy 2. Fuck. I did it twice. Hellboy 2. Um. <laughs> I, it's, it's just not a movie I've gotten around to yet. But it's definitely, it's on my watch list. It's on my radar. I'm definitely gonna check it out. Uh, cause I, I really like the first Hellboy. Um. He also mentions The Mask 2 being horrible, but. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you could do a good sequel to The Mask. Granted, Son of the Mask is so infinitely worse than The Mask that it's like, okay, even like, you could have done better. But I don't know if it could have ever been good.
And finally, John August says Transformers Dark of the Moon, which I am just going to have to strongly disagree with. I I think Transformers 2 and 3 are two of the most unwatchable movies I have ever seen. It's they they're boring, they're not funny, they're so painfully unfunny and the visuals are just a mess. I think that's the big thing for me. I I fucking hate Michael Bay movies cuz it's just visual garbage and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be paying attention to. I I just hate the way Michael Bay movies look. They they hurt my head. So um if you got something out of it, good on you. I I am not going to begrudge anyone you know, the movies they enjoy. If you got something out of Transformers 2 Dark of the Moon, good for you. I fucking hated it. I could not stand that shit. But tonight, uh, what's your favorite monster? I don't, that's not a question I've asked before. I've asked about your favorite monster movie. Tell me about your favorite monster. I want to hear about your favorite monster. Um, because tonight we're doing... A mummy triple feature. We've done plenty of Frankenstein, plenty of Dracula, so some Wolfman, and actually plenty of Wolfman too. We haven't gotten to the mummy yet, so we're starting off with Boris Karloff's The Mummy, followed by The Mummy's Hand, and finally Hammer Horror's The Mummy. Um, I can't believe how many movies there are just called the mummy <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that next time but please it's, it's just it's the universal and hammer horror ones we're not doing the brendan fraser movie we're not doing the tom cruise movie we may maybe maybe we'll do the brendan fraser movie eventually but that's a that that that's a hard maybe that's a, that's a probably not, but it could happen. We're not doing Tom Cruise, Mummy. That's just not happening. No, no way. But uh, tonight, uh, Boris Karloff and uh, Hammer Horror, Christopher Lee is the Mummy. And until next time, have a nice day.